Hey, this is Ed with Team Aquascape, day three, and we are complete at the Wildlife Way Station. We are just outside of Los Angeles, California, and this is a phenomenal facility. The first way station for animals, it's an exotic animal refuge facility, the first one ever made anywhere in the entire world. So a really cool place, unbelievable uh, founder, Martine Collette. We came in, I started talking with them four years ago about fixing things. This was the number one pond that she said they had problems with. So of course, when it's time for us to come in, we want to tackle the biggest, the worst problem that they have, and we nailed it. Team of Aquascape CACs came in. Look at this brand new skimmer system that's in here. We opened up this joint. Look at the velocity of that stuff coming in here. I mean, it's just gonna pull all of the leaf debris. All, we have feathers already coming in. They just released the, the swans and stuff, and that stuff's getting swept inside of here. The important part about that is it's going to keep the debris from floating on the surface because what we don't want to have happen is we don't want it to get wet and we don't want it to sink down to the bottom because it just decays, doesn't go away. We want to bring it in here. They can clean this. We still don't have a custom made. We have to have a net system in here. That'll be here probably within the next week. That way they can easily remove that debris. We put in our new pumps. We have some uh, Sarumi 9PL pumps over here. Those pumps are pumping 5,500 gallons of water per hour up to our constructed wetland filtration system. That wetland filtration system is 100 feet behind me, so the water goes from here into our three inch pipe, goes all the way up back uh, behind that building there into a 400 square foot constructed wetland filter that's five feet deep, filled with 50, 50 tons, 100,000 pounds of river rock. So why don't we take a walk up there so you can see exactly how all this stuff comes together. Before we head over to the wetland, I can't help but show you some of the wildlife that's in this pond. We have one of our happy turtles here. This is one of the residents. These guys are living inside of here. They feed off of all the other fish food and all the other uh, swan food that goes in here. So he's gonna be really happy with that new water quality and check out some of those swans and ducks that have been released. This is only a fraction of the amount of animals that are in here. It's gonna take us a little bit, a little while to move all the animals from the other enclosures back over into this habitat. But once they're in here, there's gonna be about 30 to 40 different species of, of waterfowl living in this enclosure. Some more of the happy residents of this system are a set of alligators. We have two alligators on this side and a large one over on that side. These guys are gonna be thrilled with all this new water quality and circulation. So what we have with this, because of that extra flow of water coming through, it's gonna sweep this entire area clean and then it goes out way off in that back corner. There's a little bit of a stream system that was created many years ago. So all we did was get the flow rates right, we got that skimmer set up and we're pre-filtering all of that water before it gets discharged into here and then from here it's gonna sweep all of their waste down into the bottom so it could recirculate the entire cycle. So this is the entire heart of the system. This wetland filter is the workhorse. This is gonna detoxify all the water that's coming from the main pond. So the water's coming in right over in the corner. We have those two three inch pipes taking all that water right down into the bottom of our wetland. Right here, from here down to the very bottom, five feet deep. This was a massive, massive excavation. And if you remember in, one, in uh, yesterday, uh, we had those centipede units coming out going off horizontally. We had six of them going in. Those three inch pipes connect to the end. And what it does is we have high velocity water coming in on one end, goes right down that centipede. Then it gets spread out through 96 small aqua blocks. That's gonna allow the sedimentation process to occur. Look around here, look at the dust, look at the, the stuff, the wind blown debris that's gonna come in here. We wanna have a place for that material to end up. And we wanna not only have it end up, we wanna have uh, be able to maintain it. Underneath here, I can open this, I could put a sump pump in here, and I could remove all of those uh, solids, sediments, debris, and stuff like that that doesn't break down. The other thing that's gonna build up in here is any of the other organic waste, uh, the waste from the different animals and things like that that are not going to break down aerobically very quickly. So there's a time period for all that stuff to occur. What's gonna help is all of the bacterias, the enzymes, the little microorganisms that we're actually gonna add to this system. We're gonna add approximately one cup of our wetland uh, filtration system uh, bacterial treatments into this, and that's gonna be enough to treat 50,000 gallons of water, which is what we have operating here. So we have those aqua blocks on the bottom, we have all of that gravel on top, 
50 tons, 100,000 pounds of river rock is spread out through this entire thing. That's going to allow all of that stuff, every little piece of rock and gravel, all of this stuff is going to be, have living colonies of microorganisms living on it. So every square inch, every square centimeter is going to be covered with little microorganisms. And what they do is, as that water comes flowing past them, they're constantly grabbing and feeding off of the little micro uh, nutrients that are in the water. So they're going to eat that stuff, they're going to break it down, and part of that process requires oxygen. That's why I'm taking water through that skimmer system. So again, go back to our skimmer, the water that's in direct contact with the atmosphere. The top couple inches has the highest dissolved oxygen content. We want that high dissolved oxygen water going into our wetland because it's going to help feed the aerobic uh, processes by the microorganisms. From here, once the water flows through, we have some different aquatic plants that we've put in. The root systems are going to extend down into the gravel bed. So from here, water's going to flow right down through this little creek bed, goes through our little grate system. So we had to put something in here because right behind me, we have those alligators. This is where the water enters the alligator enclosure. So we want to have something where those gators can't get out. We put a concrete footing in place. We embedded this fiberglass grate right into the concrete. We locked it in place with hundreds of pounds of boulders. So now we have a barrier where they can't get out, but we can still allow all that water to flow through. On the other side, we have our rubber liner. We created a little bit of a stream bed, but on the other side, we put in a series of big flat slabs. So those big flat slabs of stone, and here's one of our gators popping up right now. He hears me talking. So one uh, underneath all of that stuff is our rubber liner. These alligators can dig, they can burrow. So we wanted to barricade everything. We put in a series of big flat slabs of flagstone. We mortared them all in place so they can't get their claws in there to get at anything. Underneath that is a layer of our heavy duty underlayment fabric. So we have multiple layers of protection uh, from all the different animals. So once the water goes in here, it's gonna go all the way back down that stream and it's gonna continue the loop and we are gonna constantly recycle this water many, many, many times throughout the day. This is gonna run 365 days a year and we're gonna have pristine water quality. The beauty of this system is in its simplicity. We wanted to create something that was easy to take care of, that the maintenance staff that's already overtaxed with hundreds of other animals that they, that they have to take care of on a daily basis, we wanted to simplify their lives. We wanted to get better water quality for the animals, make it easier for the maintenance staff, um, have it just run by itself. This only needs to be cleaned. This main filter cleaned once a year. So that's gonna drastically reduce all the maintenance they have. And on top of that, we're saving water. So instead of draining and filling that pond many times throughout the year here in Southern California where water's at a premium, we could clean that water, we can recirculate it, we can filter it. Then all the excess water during the cleaning process is gonna be used for irrigation for the entire forest that these animals happen to live in. So this is the fav my, one of my favorite type of projects. We have animals, we have wildlife, we have all different things. We have the native animals that come through here. All these different things come together to create something that's just spectacular. Everybody that comes here is really gonna become more connected with nature. That's what it's all about.